Good morning, Jason. Hi, good morning, Angela. How's it going? It's, uh, it's a snowy morning, but it's going okay. <laughs> it's been three and a half weeks since the last time I saw you, which was like the Thursday before all hell broke loose. So um, what's been happening in your world since then? Well, honestly, those three weeks feel like three months, I think, probably for everyone. Um, and, uh, and we're no different. Uh, we're a small business, too, obviously. And so we've been feeling the same impacts that uh, that a lot of people around the province, around the country have felt. And so, um, yeah, it's just it's a whirlwind and it's bizarre and it's fascinating. And uh, we'll just all get through it. Absolutely. And I think the more people stick together and share information and whatnot, the better off we're all going to be. So I, I appreciate, appreciate you being here to give us a, an update on what is happening with temporary layoffs because from three and a half weeks ago, things have changed in so many different ways with legislation and government and all that. Yeah, they really have. And so uh, last time we spoke, we were speaking about temporary layoffs. So I'll just give a, uh, a quick recap of how they worked three and a half weeks ago um, and, uh, and uh, how, uh, how that's changed and how they're working now. So you'll recall that uh, there were some basic rules that the employer had to follow. And so if they were going to temporarily lay somebody off, that is not terminate them completely, but maintain the employment relationship, um, they would have to do a notice in writing, state that it's a temporary layoff, uh, provide an effective date of when that um, notice became effective. Uh, they had to include particular sections of the Employment Standards Code, section 62, 63, 64, um, and you had to give you had to give a reasonable notice, and the notice was prescribed uh, in sort of three different ways under under the code. And that was, if you had an employee who was with you two years or less, it was one week. If it was two years or more, uh, then it fell into the category of needing at, at least two weeks notice. And then there was this sort of catch-all provision, which frankly most people never used uh, in ordinary course of business. And that was unless there's unforeseeable circumstances that prevent the notice prescribed the week or the, or the two weeks. Um, but as we talked about, and as what we saw, um, suddenly there were businesses that were faced with an absolute zero revenue stream uh, mm -hmm. thrust upon them, um, you know, in the course of a day or three or five. And so employers really did what they could um, but, you know, it was my experience during those couple of weeks that more employers than not were saying, I can't do the week or two um, mm -hmm. or, or I'm going under. And so right. something less was given. You know, I think that there's um, going to be conversations about that when this is all done. Um, but, you know, I think most employers did what they could for their employees and did what was best to keep the business afloat so that the employees had someplace to come back to. Agreed. Um, you know, in a couple I think of everyone, yeah, everyone did their best and they were trying to figure out the best way to navigate it because it was for just sure. chaos and very, so many unknowns. Yeah. And, and to some extent, um, a lot of those uh, unknowns still remain today. But one of the things uh, that we talked about uh, and I talked about with uh, individual employers that, uh, that I act for um, really was this idea that the, the Alberta government is going to have to do something about this uh, 60 days because the layoff period, the temporary layoff period uh, that was prescribed was you can lay them off for 60 days. But after that, um, you, you know, you either have to enter into an arrangement with them, uh, with the employee and extend that 60 days in some meaningful way. And that was really the employee had a big say in that um, or um, it was mass terminations. And so, you know, the employers were all saying, what are we going to do in 60 days if we can't bring them back on? And if we can't make other arrangements with them, are we going to be faced with having to do actual um, termination packages uh, mm -hmm. under the code or otherwise? Um and how are we going to how are we going to pay that? We haven't had revenue in 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 those intervening sixty days. So what do we do? And I was pretty confident, and and I projected I think that confidence in our government um, to the employers that I was working with to say, listen, they're going to look at this, and they're not going to let that happen. And mm -hmm. frankly, the government uh, of Alberta has stepped into that breach. They've recognized that it was an issue, um, and uh, and that's one of the amendments, uh, the big amendments uh, that we're going to talk about this morning, which. It's a very short amendment because all it says is, hey, don't worry about the 60 days. Um, it's now uh, 120 days. Okay. And so you can you can expand that layoff, uh, that layoff period for your employees um, and keep that uh, employment relationship intact uh, for a longer period of time. Uh, and that's really positive because from a cash flow perspective, 
Um, you don't have to terminate everyone in 60 days um, if you couldn't make other arrangements. And, uh, you know, from an employee perspective, hey, I've got the comfort of knowing that at some point when this resolves, I have the opportunity to uh, come back to work. Uh, my employer hasn't, uh, hasn't cut me loose and I'm not you know, struggling to wonder where I might land at the end of all this. So, mm -hmm. um, so the government has changed that. It's effective. A couple of critical pieces uh, needs to be related, um, frankly, to COVID nineteen, um, and it has to be related to a layoff that happened on March seventeenth uh, or later. Uh, that date caused some minor panic uh, in, in uh, I think, a lot of offices. We all went back to look to see, oh, when did we first make that uh, notice effective? Mm -hmm. And um, so I know I, uh, you know, reached out with a bunch of, uh, of my employers uh, and said, hey, when was that notice effective? And, you know, I had one that was on March 17th. Uh, and the rest were all after. And so, you know, we don't have to struggle, I think, for most people to try to figure out, hey, how can I bring myself into this regime? But if there's anybody out there who did uh, a layoff, you know, on the 16th, um, then reach out to uh, to somebody like me who practices employment law and mm -hmm. uh, figure out some strategies to make that apply, uh, apply to those payrolls as well. Okay, um, so if they pulled the trigger on the 16th and said, like, we don't want to be part of the problem, we're going to shut down, and then... Yeah it should have happened on the 17th. There's some ramifications that they need to be aware of. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you may not be captured um, by this new change. In fact, uh, by the letter of the law, you're not. Uh, so speak with uh, speak with an employment lawyer and figure out how you can rectify that because it does seem a little unfair in my mind mm -hmm. where somebody was being really proactive or had a particular concern for the safety of, uh, of their workers and said, hey, we're we're, we're going to get on the right side of this thing immediately mm -hmm. um, to suddenly be punished for that. I, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't sit quite squarely with me. And so I think that there's probably some strategies that they can employ to bring themselves on side of the, uh, the current layoff provisions. Okay. So just can we quickly recap what they need mm -hmm. to know right now? Yeah. So right now, um, if you're if you're contemplating a layoff or you did a layoff after March 17th, uh, then you're captured under the new rules. And the new rules say that you can temporarily lay off your employees for 120 days as opposed to the 60 days that it was, you know, a few days ago. Um, and so that allows everyone to you know, pick up the pieces of their business and their job as an employee a little further down the line and maintain that uh, that relationship. Mm -hmm. um, for the people who did issue the temporary layoff notices, you have to issue another one. Uh, okay. It's not an automatic. It's not a simple extension. You need to proactive. So again, reach out to somebody uh, who practices in the area um, and figure out exactly how you can um, issue a new notice uh, to your employees saying, I, you know, I appreciate we issued this past notice. Now there's this new change um, and here's where we're at. Uh, and timing, you're going to want to talk to uh, to your employment lawyer about the timing of that. Uh, I think there's I think there's some nuances there that depending on your workforce, you may want to let them know right away or you may not want to let them know until much closer to the 60 days. I would not wait until the 60 day mark, though. Uh, I think that's pretty critical. You want to give some advance notice. Um, prior to that 60 days, I've been largely telling my clients, listen, let's have a conversation at about day 45 of the uh, the expiry of your um, of your temporary notice. So, you know, if you gave it on day one, let's have a conversation on day 45 and figure out the strategy of, of where you're at in your business in that moment, where we are at as a province and a country uh, in that moment and how long we want to talk to the employees about, listen, this could be continuing or, hey, things are looking up we're coming back to normal. Let's plan for uh, for a restart. Right. Yeah. And 45 days, like we're, all, we're almost at 30 days now. Yeah. So that's coming up pretty darn fast. So it is smart for people to start getting that lined up. Yeah. Start having that conversation, you know, within the next two weeks, um, I think is, is probably prudent to your point. It's, it's going to be upon us very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so have that conversation. The other thing that's a bit interesting to me about that, um, the timing and the reason why I've said, hey, let's wait for a few more weeks before we have the conversation really is around this uh, federal uh, program for the 75% payroll support up to the right. 58,000 and, and some of the other criteria that are around it. You know, the way the federal government designed that program, and it's really not rolled out uh, particularly well at this point. Um, I don't uh, I don't think anybody's been particularly able to take advantage of it yet. But 
Uh, that was really, I think, from March 15th to June 6th. And so if people are saying, hey, I'll bring some employees back and put them on payroll because I can take advantage of this 75% uh, payroll uh, support program, there's some interplay there that's not very clear because technically right now that ends on June 6th. And so if you bring your employees back and then you bump up against uh, that uh, June 6th date, um, you know, where does that leave you? Another layoff? Um, I don't know. And so I'd like to see another couple of weeks go by where employers can really gauge, okay, how does the federal government deal with this? The provincial government has given us some room. Is the federal government going to extend that June 6th date so I have some more room? Or am I just calling everybody back and having to instantly lay them off again? So maybe in a couple of weeks, we'll have a better sense of, uh, of how that's going to work. Mm -hmm. Well, it's so interesting how, how quickly things evolve too. And with how reactive the government is, um, with people thinking that this is just like a hoax or whatever, like if the government is actually laying out these major programs and making these huge amendments, yeah. uh, we need to be paying attention to that because that's a, it's not just people getting scared when the governments are making these massive changes. It's, it's a sign. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And I mean, we're, we're getting lots of signals from the federal government that, you know, social distancing could continue 12 months to 18 months, right? Various right. forms of that. Uh, we don't know what that looks like today. I'm sure they don't either. But mm -hmm. it's going to have a significant impact on how the dental community can open up their offices, right? Or, or, or how we're going to look after people's dental health for the next mm -hmm. 12 months. Um, and I don't think that's very clear. And, uh, you know, I don't think we can expect it to be. But in two weeks and four weeks, it will gradually become more clear. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think, like I say, everybody who's listening today or whenever uh, you happen to catch this, um, you know, before the 60 days is up, at least at least 15 days before, start having that conversation. It gives us a bit of breathing room to see where's the landscape now and where can we go and, um, you know, have uh, have some intelligent conversations and get the information and uh, and then use it. Absolutely. So are there certain sites that people should be watching for updates on what is progressing with the different legislations? Yeah, you know, I think the media is doing a, a tremendous job on that front. We sort of get bombarded probably daily with the with the changes. And so I don't know if there's a particular site. I happen to hop on the Alberta government website uh, today and a bunch of the links are still referencing, for example, the 60 day as opposed to the 120 day. And so I think there's danger in trying to um, trying to just go to particular sites and, and ferret that information out because frankly, things are changing so fast. I'm sure the government's like the rest of us. Uh, they simply can't keep up in all departments and all publications mm -hmm. as to what the new changes are. And so, you know, the media is, is pretty solid right now, um, you know, with the danger of overload for all of us, but, uh, you know, or, or, or speak to, uh, speak to whoever you use for employment law and, mm -hmm. uh, and they can probably keep you uh, pretty well up to date because we try to stay on top of those things. Um, and the challenge I think for the community at large is we get so much of our information out of Ontario uh, and the Ontario employment laws are significantly different than ours in some areas, including this one. So you'll read in the Globe and Mail, you know, the temporary layoffs, or, you know, related to constructive dismissal. The law in Ontario is different than Alberta. And so I, I think everybody needs to be a little bit careful how they consume information from other parts of the country because the laws don't tend to be perfectly aligned. Um, there are subtle differences that can make a pretty big, pretty big impact on, uh, you know, what kind of advice you might get here versus there. Right. That constructive dismissal thing was something I wanted to ask you about. So does that not apply in Alberta then? So we have constructive dismissal in Alberta, but as it specifically relates to uh, temporary layoffs. Right. 75%. Um, yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, there's all sorts of ways to accidentally uh, constructively dismiss or on purpose constructively dismiss employees uh, in Alberta that can get you into trouble. Um, mm -hmm. But our employment standards code and the piece that the Alberta government specifically expanded uh, just recently with the 120 days, employers are better protected against constructive dismissal when you're right. temporarily laying off employees in Alberta than in some other jurisdictions. Um, there's still, you know, there's still an argument there, but the risk is much lower in Alberta. Okay. Yeah, because when I saw that, I was like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> that's opening up people to risk in a time that we don't need extra risk right now. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, I think we're all balancing various types of risks. And 
there will be a lot of litigation, I'm sure, that comes out of this period of time. But I think when everyone looks back, as long as employers acted reasonably, uh, mm-hmm. and as long as employees acted reasonably, um, it's really both uh, both sides of that equation. Uh, I think that's about the best we can ask from everybody right now: is act reasonably. Um, you know, be kind, be prudent where you can, um, mm-hmm. and and it'll all shake out. But it's a balancing of risk. Do I go out of business or do I temporarily lay some people off and face that risk? I, I think it's a brainer. You temporarily lay off and try to survive so that those people have jobs to come back to. So it is a, you're, you're quite right. There's lots of risk out there right now and it's balancing that and trying to pick our way forward. Mm-hmm. No, that's smart advice. Is there anything you want to add before we head out today? No, I don't think so. Uh, thank you for uh, hosting me. And uh, I just wanted to make sure everyone knew that, uh, that now there was uh, an expansion. We had talked about it a number of weeks ago when it happened mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, I think uh, I think all levels of government are trying to navigate this in the same way that we're trying to navigate it. We're we're making the best choices we can every day. Mm-hmm, absolutely. If someone is seeking a second opinion or would like to get a hold of you, how can they get a hold of you? Yeah, sure. Uh, so thank you. Uh, so I still pick up my phone. Um, so uh, yeah, I still <laughs> uh, still try to do that every day. Uh, so they can uh, the number to reach me at is four zero three seven five zero one one zero seven or uh, i'm the managing partner at dunphy best bloxham you can find us uh, online at dbblaw.com again my name is jason wilkins uh, i practice in the area and i'm happy to help where i can yes and he's amazing and smart and yeah uh, well i appreciate i appreciate the show thanks angela <laughs> you're welcome have a really good day thanks for joining us on easter weekend you bet have a really great day okay bye jason all right bye-bye